Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to our channel that is Best Notes Tutorials and here we were doing Edgar Allan Poe part 1 I have already uploaded this is part 2 and in part 1 we have completed 3 stories of Edgar Allan Poe those stories are The Raven then tail, The Tail Tail Heart and the third story was the fall of house of Usher. so today we are going to take up rest of the stories in this video let's move ahead let's begin with the fourth story of edgar allan poe in our list okay The Murders in the Rue Morgue is a short story by Edgar Allan Poe, published in Graham's Magazine in 1841. It has been described as the first modern detective story. Poe referred to it as one of his tale of ratiocination. ratiocination. Now, here what you need to keep in mind is that the story was published in this magazine first of all and a year as well okay now let me tell you what is morgue morgue is a place where dead bodies are kept okay and it has been described as first modern detective story detective story that was the period when people were interested in something else and their mindset was not deviated towards detective stories okay so uh, with this story, the murder in the Rue Morgue, people started uh, demanding for detective stories as well. Okay, therefore, this particular story had gained lots of readers. All right, so let's begin. What is there in the story? The word ratiocination means a uh, valid okay or full of reason okay or you can say uh, full of intellectual thoughts okay full of intellectual things also let's see the introduction to the work Auguste Dupin is a man in Paris who solves the mystery of the brutal murder of two women. Numerous witnesses heard a suspect, though no one agrees on what language was spoken. At the murder scene, Dupin finds a hair that does not appear to be human. So here we find there is a detective, uh, C. Auguste Dupin. He is a resident of Paris and he solves brutal murder of two women okay and uh, when he went to the spot he did not find any animal items except hair which is not of human let's move ahead let's see uh, who were who was the culprit okay let's discuss the theme out here theme is the exercise of ingenuity in detecting a murderer okay here ingenuity means genuine okay real with the full dedication let's see the character details at first in order to understand story in a better way at first we find the main protagonist, Monsieur C. Auguste Dupin, and Dupin comes from a great family that's fallen on hard times. Dupin belongs to elite family, okay, but unfortunately, he had hard times now. His family had hard times now. This means that he has a private income, but still has to live on a tight budget. So here, now, when the times were hard, he had to take up private job and 
he had to manage with a small amount of income next uh, protagonist is the sailor this guy isn't a full fledged character either we think he is worth including here though because he is the only person in the murder in the room morgue besides dupin and the narrator who gets to speak to his own clients so sailor is another character okay who is not a full fledged character here okay he has some portions in the story and uh, he is the only person besides dupin okay who gets to speak to his own lines okay next is the narrator narrator seems the narrator seems to be a fairly empty character we don't know the guy's name or where the where he comes from although we do know he has not he is not a native of paris in fact is the narrator really a person at all so here we don't know any whereabouts about the narrator and uh, no name no particular place okay therefore the question arises if he is a human being now next uh, thing is the orang and otang the orang and otang has a lot of symbolic value in this letter okay because this has been uh, mentioned in other work of edgar allan poe okay it is the spelling of orang tugan okay orang tugan from where this word orang and otang has come so what is the significance of this particular uh, words we will understand in the story right now you need to keep in mind that there are three characters dupin sailor narrator and partly the orang otang okay let's begin with the summary the murders in the rue morgan starts out with a proposition there are two modes of untangling a problem okay here there are two modes of untangling a problem it means there are two solutions to a problem at first the first is that of the chess player who looks at all the pieces on a board and decides and decides from the way everything is laid out what to do next the murder in the room morgue starts out with a okay the first one the first is that of chess player who looks at all the pieces on a board and decides from the way everything is laid out what to do next the second is that of the whist player whist by the way is like a badge sorry a bridge a game with four players that depends on working out what cards your opponents are holding so here there are two ways okay one is everything is clear okay whatever uh, pieces of um, items are there on the board and what can be predicted okay what are hidden okay so these with these two ways one can solve the problem of any kind the whist player not only has to memorize the rules and moves of the game like the chess player but she also has to figure out or deduce from watching her fellow players what cards they have the kind of analysis takes both imagination and reason and it's the kind of intelligence that we are supposed to see in the story so here as i told you that there are two ways of solving any issue one is everything is clear in front of you okay you will say who is the culprit okay you have murdered then you are culprit okay but there is another way also who instigated that person okay who instigated that person and uh, in which situation he committed the murder all right so one is direct okay one is overt and another one is covert 
you can say one is clear one is hidden okay that hidden one one needs to calculate okay one needs to calculate because whatever it seen that is going to be true it is not necessary okay if you are looking for someone who has this whist player style analytical intelligence look no further than young sarcastic protagonist monsieur c auguste du dupin okay a persian gentleman fallen on hard times he is very intelligent who can calculate the moves of a person okay and he is very important character here he is persian gentleman dupin's love of detecting leads him to a case that both the newspaper and the police themselves have declared unsolved the murderers in the rue morgan aka morg street at aka a a k a morg street here dupin had hard times therefore he had to take up jobs randomly all right now finally he was given a case because he was extremely interested in detecting okay detective work therefore when he saw in the newspaper the unsolved story he wanted to give a try let's move ahead attracted by the light on in meder moiselli l espanyel's apartment the orang gutten climbs up a lightning rod swings across to a to the shutter and enters the room through an open window the two lespanai women are sitting with their backs turned to the window when the orangutan suddenly grabs the older lady's hair and starts pretending that she that he is her barber this is the origin of the horrible screams that awake the neverwood her visible fear anger the ape angers the ape who slashes her throat with the razor now here we get to see that neverwood wakes up because of the horrible scream now why somebody screamed let's see her visible fear angers the ape okay here um the ape okay who was there who was pretending pretending to be barber okay when he came to the room and touched the old woman's hair okay she screamed she screamed and because of this scream uh, the ape becomes very angry and with a razor he cuts the throat of this old lady the sight of blood angers him even more the blood which came out after cutting off the throat angered him even more and he turns on the daughter struggling her with his bare hands okay little girl little daughter of this lady okay who was struggling okay who was hardly able to move okay he was she was there sorry meanwhile the sailor has been watching all this helplessly from the window here there is a sailor who is looking at the things which is happening out here and because um uh, of the situation okay he was not able to do anything so he was helplessly watching all this thing the orangutan sees him orangutan sees him and suddenly becomes fearful he tries to hide the bodies by putting meder moiselli l espanai in the chimney and throwing madam l espanai out the window as the ape approaches the window corpse in hand the sailor is so freaked out that he slides down the lightning rod and runs away and that's the sailor's story here orangutan sees him and suddenly becomes extremely intimidated 
and uh, he tries to hide the body by putting the madam's uh, body in the chim uh, chimney and throwing madam little madam okay daughter out of the window now ape approaches to the window and uh, the sailor he could not stand all this thing therefore he just uh, slided down the lightning rod and he ran away so this is about later on in the story the readers get to know that it was done by the ape and it was not human being okay it was not the murder was not done by human being but it was ape okay so this was found out by dupin with his investigation he was very intelligent therefore he was able to solve this mystery that mother and daughter were murdered not by a human being but by an ape let's move to the next story next story is the black cat it was first published it was first published in the august 19 1843 edition in the edition of the saturday evening post the black cat was published in this magazine it is a study of the psychology of guilt often paired in analysis with pose the tell tell heart here this is also psychological story okay and it can be resembled with the tell tell story which we have done earlier in earlier uh, video okay because it is psychological novel and it talks about how human mind works okay let's move ahead like many news stories like many news stories the black cat can be a donor stripped to bare bones it is a story about domestic violence and brutal murder it is the death row confession of nameless man who destroys himself his wife and his pets okay so here we get to see that it talks about domestic violence and brutal murder now what led the protagonist to do these two social evil let's find out as is often the case with the real life murderer we can't pinpoint exactly why he went out of control this mystery is part of what has kept the black cat in circulation for over a 160 years please keep in mind friends the work is similar to other works but still it has great implication in literature okay now why that we need to read out but before that let's find out what is the theme of this story theme is justice and truth and superstition okay let's discuss these two points right now the narrator tries to hide the truth by wailing up his wife's body but the voice of the black cat helps bring him to justice next is superstition the black cat is an omen or bad luck a theme that runs throughout literature murder and death is the central focus of the entire story here superstition rules the story here as usual black cat is regarded as uh, it brings bad luck to a human being okay so uh, this is also related with the death as we have already told in our last video that almost all the themes of edgar allan poe's work is death supernatural elements gothic uh, elements etc okay so the same thing we get to see out here as well another character in the story is pluto the titular black cat is the protagonist's pet whom he names pluto the black cat's name is pluto please keep in mind because in mcq you might be asked what is the name of the cat in the story the black cat of edgar allan poe you have to remember pluto okay 
the name is an allusion to the random uh, to the roman god of the underworld which gives the cat a deathly demeanor as the story unfolds the protagonist's relationship with pluto represents this transfer his transforming relationship with his own soul so let's find out what is in this story the black cat is told from the perspective of an insane narrator okay who is in who in his own words does not expect the reader to believe him it tells the reader up front that he is scheduled to die the following day but the reader does not find out why until the end of the story after setting up his story from his perspective the man tells the reader about a cat named pluto he used to have as a pet in the story we find the narrator okay the narrator tells that he is going to die he is going to die because it is scheduled okay it is uh, specified that when and uh, how he is going to uh, die okay but till the end we don't know that what power of this narrator um, uh, tell him so and he also says that he has a pet whose name is pluto okay and uh, the story moves ahead what happens then let's find out he describes pluto as a remarkably large beautiful animal entirely black the narrator's wife jokes that the cat might be a witch in disguise given its unusual intelligence here the cat okay who is whose name is pluto jokingly narrator's wife says that because it is too black okay it might be a witch okay who disguised in a black cat the narrator and pluto have a close bond the narrator and pluto the cat okay both of them have a great bonding he takes care of pluto and pluto follows him everywhere around the house it is a very tender relationship so here we find human being human beings nature okay with human beings you can say connection with pets okay which is always beautiful so here also the same can be seen then everything goes wrong the narrator an alcoholic starts getting angry at everyone he mistreats his wife and his other animals but he never hurts pluto but one night the narrator comes home drunk and thinks pluto is avoiding him he grabs the cat who bites him in retaliation the narrator cuts out one of the cat's eyes here this is so brutal he was drunk totally drunk okay he has he had boozed a lot and he was not in his control the the pet whom he loved a lot okay he cut off his one of the eyes okay cats pluto's one of the eyes and even cat bites him before that after the slips of his after the slips of his drunken state the narrator is horrified about his actions now when he was all right when he was not in the uh, effect of alcohol he became so horrified it is not enough to get him to stop drinking though now even after that he was not stopped he kept on drinking the cat's eye socket heals but pluto and the narrator no longer have a good relationship obviously he had damaged one of his eyes so the pet is not going to be his friend okay so pluto starts to avoid the narrator all the time pluto the cat is not interested in the narrator at all instead of feeling remorseful the narrator just feels irritated behavior that 
cat's behavior because of the behavior of the cat now he had done the narrator had done mistake so he should have showered love and affection to this cat but he did not do so rather than repenting his mistake what he did he became so much irritated by the cat's behavior the narrator hangs the cat in cold blood from a tree from a tree the night his house burns down the narrator his wife and their servant all escape the fire unharmed but the fire destroys his home and all of his possessions now here narrator after getting irritated he takes the cat out of his home and he hangs him to a tree this might be asked in the question friends please keep in mind that where did he hang the cat okay you have to write tree okay this seems very easy but when it comes in the examination you will get confused okay so keep in mind here that day his house burns okay even though all these members were safe but his house and all the possessions were destroyed when the narrator returns to the ashes later he sees the figure of a cat on the only surviving wall here after everything was destroyed he goes near to the one of the remnants of the house and it was a wall where he could see image of the cat okay months pass the narrator sees a cat remarkably similar to pluto except that on his chest is a white patch the cat follows him home at first the narrator likes the cat but soon he can't stand the cat at all especially after he notices that one of its eyes is missing so here months passed okay after so many months he found one cat okay he was followed the cat followed him to home all right initially he was so happy because the cat was similar to the earlier one but only one thing was missing out and that was the white patch on the chest this can also be asked that how new cat was different than the old one which he hanged in the tree so you have to write the white patch next uh, point is that the narrator was happy but later on he found that his one of his eyes were miss uh, one of the eyes was not there therefore he started becoming irritated again the more he hates the cat the more cat likes him the narrator cannot bring himself to hurt the cat because he is afraid of it now here contradictory things happened okay the narrator hated the cat but cat loved him a lot here cat was earlier cat was already hanged he was dead okay but this second cat was uh, the narrator was not able to do any harm to this new cat okay because he was so much afraid the white shape on his chest morphs into a gallows a direct reminder of his crime against pluto here the chest white portion was also morphed okay it was changed into a gallows okay and it is a direct reminder the crime of the of pluto okay the crime that was committed by pluto it was shown by the nature as well and it was vivid to the narrator eventually the narrator is driven to mad that he tries to kill the cat with an axe his wife intervenes and the narrator ends up killing his wife he decides to conceal the body inside the house behind the wall of the basement here finally the narrator was had become so mad that he tried to kill the cat with an axe okay with which we cut the trees but wife stopped him wife intervened and therefore in anger he killed his wife 
itself. So later on he tried to conceal the body inside the house itself behind the wall of the basement. Friends, this story is similar to the tell-tale hut, okay, because there also we find narrator who was not in, who hated a man because of his eyes, okay, because of his pale, weird eyes, and finally, he hates him so much that he happened to kill this man as well. Later on, he chops the body of this man, okay, and then he hides the body beneath the floorboards but later on he kept on hearing noise of the heartbeat okay and police also came to check it out and finally he himself reveals the um, that he is a culprit okay so here also the same thing we find narrator who hated the narrator who hated the cat okay because he became irritated and later on he kill after killing him he became uh, he himself considered that he was the culprit he had murdered okay so this is the story out here and we will move to another story now the mask of red death let's see what is here in the story the mask of the red death originally published as the mask of the red death or fantasy is a short story by American writer Edgar Allan Poe and it was published in 1842. Okay. Let's see the introduction of the story. The story follows Prince Prospero's attempt to avoid a dangerous plague known as the Red Death by hiding it in his abbey. He along with many other wealthy noble hosts and masquerades ball in seven room of the abbey each decorated with a different color here uh, friends abbey means abbey means that uh, where uh, people go for praying okay a kind of prayer hall and here he organized a masquerade ball ball is a party okay and the masquerade means mask party you must have seen people nowadays it is in fashion that people wear mask and then they dance okay they enjoy the party so that was organized by prince prospero okay and uh, at that time dangerous plague had spread and uh, um, he you know tried to hide this particular disease in his abbey all right and uh, at that time he organized this ball and it was very much decorated and for that seven rooms were engaged in the midst of their revelry a mysterious figure disguised as a red death victim enters and makes his way through each of the rooms Prospero dies after confronting this stranger whose costume proves to contain nothing tangible inside it. The guests also die in turn. Now here the party was going on and suddenly one figure, mysterious figure appears. Okay and it is regarded as Red Death. Okay the figure is named as Red Death. It enters to each and every room okay and uh, prospero the one who organized the ball party masquerade okay mask party had died and then the guests as well okay because it was spreading at alarming rate that time so it is mentioned out here red death is mentioned out here which not only kills the king but kills other guests as well Let's see the theme. Throughout the story, Poland addresses a few dis, um, distinguishable themes or universal message. Humanity's desire to escape death, madness and human selfishness. In The Mask of the Red Death, Poe explores themes related to the inability of 
ma uh, death, madness and selfishness. So here the theme is human desire to live more. Okay, human desire escape, want to escape death. All right, there are so many stories related to it. In CBC class 12, there is a story, the Tiger King. Okay, in Tiger King, we get to see um, the king tries to kill the hundredth tiger. Okay, in order to escape his death. In this pursuit, he destroys flora and fauna of his kingdom and another kingdom as well. All right, but eventually he dies. So such is a story presented out here. Okay, the theme is that human nature is to avoid death and madness. Nobody wants to become mad. People are very selfish. Okay, they are they think about their uh, enjoyment, their uh, selfish desire to be accomplished. Okay, and in mask uh, we find another uh, element that is whatever you do, death is going to approach to you. Okay, death is going to approach to you and if you don't accept it, the madness is also going to arrive here. As I have told you about the story, the tiger king, the king had become almost mad, okay, in pursuit of killing tigers, right? He had become selfish, extremely selfish because apart from he himself, he did not have anything else in his mind. Let's move towards the character details now. Prince Prospero, first protagonist, Prospero looks like shallow guy. All he seems to care about is pleasure, which is what it means to be a hedonist. He does not want to spend his time doing anything but drinking, dancing and laughing and generally having fun. That makes him an awful ruler because... When the going gets tough, Prospero gets going. Here, Prospero looks very shallow because he did not have intelligence to decide what is right at that point of time. What, what he should do. Okay, what he should do in the crisis of Red Death. When plague was spreading, he should have taken precaution. Okay, just like the situation of Corona. Right now what we are doing, we are residing inside our home and when if we are coming out, we are taking precaution, right? And uh, uh, from our end, we are trying for our safety. But this Prospero did not do that at all. Okay, he wanted to have pleasures of life in this crisis period as well. And thus, not only, not only this uh, king, the, not only this prince, but other guests also died okay so here we we understand that we should take steps according to the situation okay we cannot follow the uh, customs the scheduled routines that we were following earlier we need to make amendments according to the requirement of the situation okay next is the red death the red death may just be the biggest party Pooper of all time. He is death embodied or something like that. It is not really clear just what he is since there is no tangible form, touchable or solid form underneath his costume. So here red death is a symbolic representation. Here it is uh, the thing which destroys everyone. Okay, it destroys everyone. It does not have shape, size and any form. Okay, it is intangible. We cannot touch it. Alright, so most probably it is some disease, okay, which we cannot see and touch. But it is very hazardous. He does not seem to have any real motives beside uh, bringing darkness and decay wherever he goes. The red death, wherever it goes, it brings remorsefulness, okay, because of the death that it carries. Particularly to fools who like to forget their own mortality. Here, just like prince who had forgotten its mortality, okay, so whoever forgets the mort 
uh, that they are not immortal the death is going the red death is going to entrap them okay that he may be why that may be why he is never invited to parties that is why red death is never invited to parties who welcomes diseases no one isn't it so here also red death was not invited so here we find personification okay keep in mind but he always shows up kills the host and turns the whole thing into one deadly disaster nobody welcomes him nobody calls him nobody invites him still he comes as a guest and he turns whole thing into a deadly disaster okay it is uninvited guest Let's start with the summary now. Terrible disease. Terrible disease called the Red Death has struck the country. It is incredibly fatal, horribly gruesome, and it is already killing off half the kingdom. But the ruler of these parts, Prince Prospero, does not seem to care about his poor dying subjects. here very much relatable to our situation friends what if i'll go into that this corona situation then it is going to lose its track so let's focus out here red death okay it is a disease which has struck the country but everybody should be very much horrified because it is very horrifying disease all right but the ruler is so reluctant he parties he calls people okay and eventually he died because of the foolishness of this prince instead instead he decides to let the kingdom take care of itself while he and a thousand of his favorite knights and ladies shut themselves up in a fabulous castle to have one never ending party wine women music dancing fools prospero's castle has it all after the last guest enters no one else can get in the prince has welded the doors shut that means no one can get out either here we find that the country which should have saved itself okay by taking safety precautions they have engaged in enjoying wine women music dancing etc because they were fools okay because only fools can do these things because in the crisis period of some disease wide spread spread pandemic disease they should have taken shelter in their respective homes but here the king the prince had to party okay the prince was so extravagant that he had to party okay he was a wasteful prince so what he did he got everything inside his castle night women wine dancing uh, people fools etc okay and th- when the last get guest entered the door was welded so that nobody can go out about 5 or 6 months into his stay Prospero decides to have a spectacular masquerade ball a ball where the guests wear masks and costumes the setup is weird and wild just like the prince who designs it the ball takes place in a suit of seven rooms each one dressed up in a different color blue purple green orange white violet and black please remember the colors because in the examination you will be asked okay they might tell you that which color is uh, was not the room of the party of the prince okay It's if they will give red then you have to mark there because this was not the color okay so here the party was set up okay everything was there inside the room and the all the seven stalls were colored differently okay the black room which looks like death is awfully creepy it's got dark black walls 
blood red windows and big black clock which chimes so eerily every hour that everyone at the party stops dancing and laughs nervously so here first room is black okay the decoration was horrible the black walls the paint it was painted with black color and the windows were red in color okay and it used to the, there was a clock of black color itself and it used to chime it used to sound very erratically in every hour which stopped dancing of the people and they laughed nervously most of the frolicking masqueraders are too bearded to go out to go into the black room everyone they wanted to go towards black room it is to signify that people are moving towards death anyway the party is full swing parties party is in full swing and everybody is having a wild time when the clock strikes midnight everyone stops dancing and falls momentarily silent as usual then some of the dancers notice a guest no one had seen before wearing a scandalous costume whoever the new guest is he is decided to dress as a corpse a corpse who died of the red death now we find one new guest here okay whose name is regarded as the red death because of his appearance and other things till now nobody had seen this guest he is so frightening like life like or death like he freaks everyone out and he slowly starts stalking through the frightened crowd when prince prospero sees the ghostly guest he is furious that someone would have the nerve to wear such a costume and order him to be seized and unmasked but no one has the guts to do it including prospero himself prospero the prince orders okay but he could not go and do it by himself because he was wearing something which is so weird and fearsome as well the red death mosquito passes within a few feet of the prince and stalks to walk sorry starts to walk through the rooms heading towards the black room prospero loses its uh, control and runs after him in rage drawing his dagger as he approaches but just as prospero reaches the edge of the black room the corpse like guest suddenly whirls round to face him and prospero falls on the ground dead now here we get to see that prince was very short tempered person okay and because the red death did not obey his orders and he headed towards black room he became furious okay and then he he tried to kill him with his dra- dagger but when he turns towards him he became dead okay because his face was so fear fearful okay so he would became dead the shocked crowd throws itself at the guest only to discover in horror that it is nothing underneath the mask and costume now they wanted to know who is he they wanted to discover but when they took off clothes and mask they found nothing okay the red death itself has come to the party red death had come to the party okay it was the last guest one by one the guests die spilling their blood all over prospero's lavish rooms the candles go out leaving only darkness decay and the red death it is to show that unless and until people uh, preserve themselves people protect themselves nothing can be done okay so here one by one after the other the one who enjoyed their life uh, had to leave it because of their carelessness okay let's see the literary devices here imagery imagery is the first literary device an important device that we see out here in the mask of the red death is ghastly 
example of imagery there were sharp pains and sudden dizziness and then profuse bleeding at the pores with dissolution analysis who establishes the mood and setting of the story with the vivid description of the red death here through imagery it was possible to describe red death people were able to imagine his appearance okay which was very horrifying which was very gruesome friends we will continue its last portion the edgar allan poe's other stories in our next video till now we have completed six stories of edgar allan poe including part 1 and part 2 third one i will make it very soon please wait for that till then take care bye bye and work hard wholeheartedly i wish you all the best for your examinations sincerely thank you